I've always been especially competitive when it comes to throwing. I've never remotely cared about baseball or pitching, but I'd spend entire summers at the beach lobbing rocks around when I was younger. It makes sense then that I was always interested in the idea of the sling. What I like about the sling is what it fundamentally provides. A mechanical advantage for increased velocity of projectiles thrown by arm by acting as an extension of the arm. It synergized with what I already had, power. Accuracy is obviously a good thing, and accuracy together with power is way more impressive and useful than either arm separately, but I've always pretty much just focused on power and finding ways to increase it. It's really inconvenient for me then that measuring things like projectile velocity and launch distance with any precision is usually a pain in the ass. This is probably a big part of why competitive or hobbyist slinging is always more about marksmanship than athleticism, which is a shame. Slings, mechanically, resemble a thrown hammer more than they do a bow, and physically resemble throwing a discus more than they ever could fire on a rifle. For measuring accuracy, you can easily just observe proximity of the impact to its intended target, the bullseye. There isn't any easy metric like that when it comes to assessing for power. Radar guns are really finicky. Finding stones buried inches into the dirt hundreds of metres away is a nightmare. Outfitting cast lead glandes with a mini GPS is probably even worse. Finding easy and precise ways to measure velocity and distance is a problem that I've spent some time thinking about. My first proper attempt at an empirical establishment of velocity is quite simple and is demonstrated in this video. It's similar to the protocol for timing something like a 100 meter sprint that you'd see in the Olympics. So I have an exact 10 meter length of yellow paracord that I take everywhere with me and that gives an easy fixed known distance whenever I need one. It's way easier to deploy than a surveyor's wheel. If I'm doing this at a beach, I'll use rocks to mark the start and end points. I can quite easily project along a line in 10 meter increments for longer ranges if I need to, but around 10 meters usually works fine for what I need. A high speed camera placed more or less perpendicular to the finish line can quite easily establish visually the precise moment the projectile has traversed the minimum 10 meter shortest distance constituted by a straight line from start to finish, and also the moment the projectile is loose from the sling. Counting the frames recorded between those two events, start and finish, gives a duration. Time and distance are all that's required for the calculation of average speed, and both of those can be established quite easily like this. Recording at 60 frames per second means each frame lasts 0.016 seconds. If for example crossing the finish line takes 40 frames while recording at 240 fps, then it takes 1 sixth of a second to traverse the 10 meters for a 60 meter per second average speed. This isn't a muzzle velocity calculation, which is what would be ideal. It's a speed over a minimum distance calculation, which is necessarily lower. It's conservative. Projectile velocity diminishes slightly due to air resistance, especially at higher velocities and over longer distances. It's also conservative relative to a pure muzzle velocity reading in that it doesn't account for how the projectile always has to travel farther than the 10 meters by the time the camera establishes the 10 meter minimum has been met. There's usually a slight lateral component to the shot due to human error, and there's also a vertical component if the projectile doesn't stay at head height, especially if I'm trying to fire above a camera to reach the finish line without destroying it which I'm doing here. There are also a few other things like wind curving the shot and standing safely behind the starting mark. If I measure a 50 meter per second average using this really safe process, it's possible that the muzzle velocity was closer to 60 meters per second, which is way more impressive than what would otherwise be an established 50 meter per second minimum. I can close the gap and shrink the error bars with better procedure in future. For now, I'm happy with being able to guarantee that I'm achieving velocities and to have a repeatable procedure for establishing it in the field. Alright, I'm going to demonstrate this using that shot that you just saw there, so... First of all, start line and finish line, so the starting point is... Wait a minute. It's this rock here, just underneath my right foot. That's the starting point. And then the finish is over here at that rock there. So that's the 10 meters right there. All I've got to do is, is figure out the exact frame where the rock passes vertically over that rock, imagining that there's a pole there or something, and then do the same thing for there, and then the frame difference is the duration, so it happens 
between these two frames, I'm going to take the layer one to be conservative. Uh, and then over here, so that's 42 frames because I can only resolve two frames at once because the footage is recorded at 240 FPS, but the project is only at 120, so 42 frames or 0 0.175 seconds, so 1 divided by 0 0.175 is 57.14 meters per second, which is, what, how much is that? That's like, that is 127 miles an hour. Well, the fastest ever pitch is 106, I think, 106 miles per hour, like baseball pitch. And the highest ever exit velocity, like, ball off of a bat during baseball is I think 119 or 120 so this was a pretty lazy swing like I'm using a pretty hefty rock which gives it a good like the playback is good you can easily see the rock even though it's got this backdrop that makes it kind of ambiguous sometimes in the future I'll probably do it facing the sea so I was using a pretty hefty rock that I was casting out of a sling that I'd improvised in the hotel room the night before because my usual slings were broken because I'd went so hard with them over the past few days and in doing so I also really fatigued my arm and I had fucking sunburn on my neck and all this shit so I was kind of handicapped a lot for this but I still had to try and do this before I got on the bus to go home and 57 meters per second considering everything that's pretty good I think I can easily get up to like 70, 80, 90 in the future and I'll be doing that so looking forward to it. Alright, thanks for watching.